Welcome to A New Life in Christ, a radio ministry of Agape Family Worship Center, located at 4111 Maple View Drive in Beaver Creek, Ohio, where Mark McVeigh is pastor. Our goal is to help you reach your full potential in Christ. Join us now in a service already in progress. You know, as I begin to open the scriptures, I read um, over in the book of Habakkuk that uh, the prophet Habakkuk, a, a minor prophet, when he heard the things of the Spirit of the Lord, the scripture says that his belly trembled, um, and his lips quivered at his at, at the voice, and uh, he felt trouble in his days. I don't know about you, but there have been times in our lives recently that we have felt trouble. I shared with you earlier that the church has been under attack. People have been under attack. Christianity is under attack. But the scripture says, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hinds feet, and he will make me to walk upon mine high places. This is to the chief singers on the stringed instruments. I, I shared this passage of scriptures a few weeks ago when I was sharing concerning worship and praise, and this was directed to those that would worship the Lord. And I really feel like that uh, when obstacles arise in our life, it's not a time to let your hands hang low and your head begin to drag, but that you begin to lift up your voice into the Lord and begin to acknowledge Him and exalt Him with the high praises of our lips. It's there that the true fruit of the Word of God is brought to a place of ripeness or maturity, ready for the use of in the land. And I, I speak that when I say the fruit of the Spirit, when I say the fruit of the Word of God in our lives, I, I really feel like that we need to go past the elementary ideals of, well, I'm saved. Yes, thank God we're saved. But when we look at the book of Hebrews, it says, let us go on into maturity. Leaving the first principles, that doesn't mean forgetting those things. And it doesn't mean stop walking in those things, but those things have become second nature so that you don't have to go back to repentance of dead works, the ideals of baptisms, the, the whole idea of living and loving God. It means that you are established there, but that you will go past that place in the Lord and produce fruit that will remain I don't know how any else to say it except the fact that oftentimes it is that there are those that are even to a place of depression and the scripture says in the last days many will depart the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, doctrines of devils, and literally will literally just walk away from the things of God because of the oppression that will come in the world. Now, Habakkuk had a revelation of that because he said, you're looking at times where that there's no calf in the stall, where the, where the fig tree is not bearing fruit, and literally that uh, his belly trembled and his speech tremored. Now, when you understand what that means, that's fear and intrepidation. How many know that God has not called us to the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind? so that the Word of God would reign paramount in our lives even in times of difficulty, knowing that the trying of our faith is more precious than that of gold, and afterwards it will yield the peaceable fruit of righteousness, and those things that we are established in are sealed in our lives. Now, I think that's very clear that uh, the book of Hebrews tells us to, to go on past that. But he also says prior to that to grow up into those things so that those who by reason of use concerning the word of God, when he talks about those who, that strong meat belongs to those that are of full age, in the book of Hebrews there it says those who by reason of use. That means that it's been applied. It's a principle that you continue in. It's not something that you're on again, off again with, but you're established in the truth. 
There's so many that are not established in the truth. There are so many that are tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine and ideal and teaching. It's so important that you, through the Spirit of God, are anchored in the Word to a level that you're able to contend in the faith. Amen? Not just knowing what it says, but having it sealed in your life. It's almost, uh, I, I've taught before how that the engrafted Word of God becomes a part of not what you are, but who you are. Uh, it's not what you believe it anymore, it's, it's who you are. Uh, you know, when you respond, you don't respond out of the flesh and then say, oh my gosh, I should have responded out of the Spirit. You are sealed with the Word of God to a point and level that you are walking in the Spirit, you're communing with God. Yes, you're going to make mistakes. Yes, there's going to be times that you're going to have to repent and do it over. But there's also that place in your life where you say, you know what? Devil, you're not getting me this time. I know what the Word of God says, and this is how I will respond. Amen? So look at this. It says that uh, in, in John's Gospel, chapter 15, in verse 1, it says, I am the true vine, Jesus is speaking here, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. I don't know about you, but pruning is not always pleasant. I don't know about you, but I've got the pruning shears in my hand and clipped the rose bush, and I've clipped the apple tree, and I've clipped this, and, and then you stand back and say, oh my gosh, what have I done? I've killed this thing. But how be it when you step back and a few days passes... And then in a couple of weeks, it's kind of like a bad haircut. Anybody besides me know what the difference between a good haircut and a bad haircut is about two weeks. Yes. Amen? Give it a little time. And so when God begins to prune us, for the moment it seems like, oh my gosh, can anything good come off of this? But what happens then after the pruning process... The dead wood is removed. Those sucker limbs that come up on the side of the, the, the tree are pruned off. And guess what? It begins to cause that tree to flourish. And we are considered the, the, the trees of the field. And as God begins to cleanse and purge and prune us through the Word of God. Look at this, what it says. I, I, I know this is a, a, an elementary teaching for some this evening, but we're going to get to something in this this evening. It says, every branch in me that bears not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean or pruned through the Word which I have spoken to you. Anybody besides me ever feel like that, you know what, I have really on the track now and I feel like that things are going really well and then all of a sudden you get a revelation that shows you just who you are and what things that you have in your spirit that need to be submitted to God and he begins to show you now this is something that I need to show you. I find myself looking at the scriptures and it says iniquity abounds because the love of many waxes cold. I want you to think about that. Iniquity abounds because the love of many waxes cold. What is the response of most Christians to the world? I mean, I, I'm, I'm a pastor. I've been a pastor for 25 years and been preaching for 37 years. And there are times in my life when I see people's mistakes and it's easy to judge and criticize not knowing where they're from, what they've been going through, and where they've been. And you know what? Then I become critical of something that I shouldn't be critical of. And God begins to show you, now wait a minute now, back up. You need to begin to, to reach into the lives of those that are hurting, those that are being destroyed and held captive at the enemy's will because of a lack of knowledge, and then begin to allow the Word of God to make a difference. Amen? I believe it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's the anointing that will break the yoke. You, you want to see lives changed? It has to be done through the anointing of God's word. You just, if preaching were to do it, just simple teaching and, and preaching, it, people would be delivered by now. But we need the delivering power of the anointing of the Holy Spirit alive in our lives that will literally transform those that are held captive by the enemy. And it's the anointing that does that. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. So how can man know that we're his disciples? What did I say? Because iniquity abounds, the love of many waxes cold. 
But Jesus said, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. Because you attend Agape Family Worship Center on Sunday morning? No, that's not it. Because you wear your hair a certain way and everybody knows that that's a, a PhD. No, that's not it. Because you got a bumper sticker that says Jesus saves? No. The scripture says, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples because you love one another. And I think that the whole key oftentimes is misrepresented even to the levels where that we could speak with tongues of men and of angels and have not love, and it profits me nothing. We've become a, a, a tingling symbol, a jingling sound, a, a sound without message. And this is what the Scripture tells us. I, I know that the, the Word of the Lord is clear, that even though that I could prophesy and that I would have an understanding of the mysteries of heaven and have not love, it's not going anywhere. That's why I believe that it's so important that we be a loving church that's producing fruit and that that fruit would remain. That it would be a type of fruit of the Spirit that is going to be transferred into the lives of those that come and dwell. I, I really feel like that. That's the truth. I, this is what the Scripture says. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. I'm going to skip over something here down to the 16th verse. This is a verse that has just stood out to me for years because it says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Now I can tell you that along with myself, I've, I've sat back and said, but Lord, why me? How could you use me? Why would you want to use me? What do you see in me? The beautiful part of it is, is he sees a potential in you that you don't see in yourself. That's why he says, through the word, I will clean you, I will purge you, I'll prepare you. And as we are yielded to the word of the Lord, there's fruit that is going to come. Amen? I, I feel like that as the spirit of the Lord begins to flow in the life of a believer, the potential that God has placed on us supersedes what you can think, hope, or imagine. For I have not seen nor ear heard, neither entered the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. But the spirit will bring forth that revelation. Now I'm going to tell you something about the Spirit of the Lord. We have the potential. This may blow some of your minds, but you have the potential within your life to be all that you would ever dream or desire to be in the Lord if you would yield to that. There is nothing impossible to them that believe. Amen? That's what the Scripture says. All things are possible to them that believe. Is there anything too hard for God? What would you desire of the Lord? The scripture says, whatsoever thing, what, whatever you desire, when you pray, believe, and you can have that. Now, I know a lot of folks say, well, pastor, you know, that, that's, listen now. The key is having your heart in a right place with God. Because you have not because you ask not or you ask amiss. Now, in reality, the Scripture says that he will give you the desires of your heart. Isn't that what he says? Let's, let's just look at that real quick in, in uh, the book of Psalms. I, I want you to, to read this for yourself. Don't just take my word for it. I know that one of my favorite passages of Scriptures is right here. And I always tell folks that are going through a difficult time in the middle of the night to take two Psalms 37s and call me in the morning. Because a lot of times it's derived around some of these issues when you get to thinking about what people have done to you, how they've injured you, how they've shortchanged you, how they have cost you. And in reality, every one of us have experienced in some form or a fashion 
devastation from past relationships that have been damaged, mistrusts that have been made, and it, it, it hurts. I don't know about you, but it hurts. Because for me, I love, I love much. When, when I give in a relationship, I, I love all the way. It's not, well, really didn't have much invested anyway, so what do I care? I, I like to give it all. Amen? Amen. The scripture says, fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be envious against the worker of iniquity. And this is Psalms 37 and 1. Verse 2 says, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust, trust in the Lord and do good. In other words, even when you're facing the adversities of being let down, do the right thing. This is a part of him abiding in you and you in him. It's no longer you abiding in the world and responding with the world. Because if you respond like the world, in the world you'll receive of like kind. Isn't that true? Jesus said, bless and don't curse. Bless those that curse you. Bless and don't curse. Now come on, Lord, in the flesh, that's hard. But by the Spirit yielded to God's Word that says, you know what, flesh, you are going to participate. Yes, it hurts. Yes, I'm even angry, but I must forgive, not for them, but for me. And when you get to that place where that you're willing to forgive, not for them, but for you. Because if you will not forgive, God can't forgive you. Did you realize that people go through life with heaviness and oppression, bombarded through the cares of the world because they will not or refuse to forgive? There's some times in our life where that we have just to get along with God and say, Lord, I forgive those that have injured me. I forgive, call them by name. You don't have to, you don't have to tell everybody what people did to you. But you need to get alone with God and say, Lord, I forgive them. And if possible, get on the phone or go see the person that, that hindered you or caused you to fail or caused you problems and forgive them. You'll be amazed at how healing that is. We say, well, what if they don't accept that? What if they don't accept that? What if they feel like they didn't injure me? Then it's on them. How many know that it's not necessarily all the time about you? But there are times where that you need to forgive not because the other person is going to get free, but because you're going to get free. Amen? That's, the, that's a real key right there. Somebody needs to write that down. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord. And here it is. Delighting in the Lord. Setting our affections on the things that are in heaven, not in the earth. Delighting ourselves in the Lord. And he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way into the Lord. Trust also in him. And he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light. And thy judgment as the noonday. Now, recently I've done studies on judgment you can also insert that word discernment or judgment. The scripture says in Hebrews chapter 5 there, I believe it says that there was a time that you ought to be teachers, but now need one teach you the first principles of the Lord again. Because he that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe, and there's nothing wrong with being a babe. For strong meat belongs to those that are of full age, who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern or judge good and evil. Judgment, discernment operate hand in hand. If there's one thing that the body of Christ needs to bring to a heightened level is her ability to discern and to judge. Well, what are we to judge? Are we supposed to judge people? The Word of God will do that. What you are able to judge or discern is prophetic words, 
Does it line up with God's word? I, I shared with you Sunday morning when a, when a prophetic word goes forth that it needs be judged by the word. It shouldn't be contrary to the word. It's not going to cause conflict with the word. It will always lead you to the word every time. Edification, exhortation, and comfort. Amen? Look at this. I, I want you to see this. Commit your ways unto the Lord. Trust also in the Him, and He will bring it to pass. And He shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. You're going to be able to discern with credibility what's happening in the earth and around you and in your family because of the fruit of the Spirit that's operating in you through abiding in Him. We're going back to John chapter 15 in just a minute, but I want you to see this. Rest Rest, this is something the Lord really spoke to my spirit because I find myself oftentimes not being able to rest. And I don't think I'm the only one. Rest. Have you ever just taken an afternoon or an evening, kick your shoes off, put your feet up, Rest. I'm not talking about turning the TV on and watching your football game or your favorite sitcom or your favorite love story. I'm talking about just kick your shoes off, rest. Do you know, I'm finding out a lot of people cannot have silence in their life. Can't get in the car without having the radio on. Because something has got to be going on to silence what God is trying to say to you. My wife gets upset with me because I've got a very good sound system in my truck and I very seldom ever listen to music. If I'm listening to anything, it's usually the word. Otherwise, it's off and I like quiet. There's something very settling about resting with quiet. I don't like a TV on when I go to bed. A lot of people can't sleep without the TV going. Have you ever taken the opportunity just to rest in the Lord, get quiet enough to say, Lord, speak to my spirit? What you will find out of the abundance of your how, of, of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak. But even deeper than that, as a man thinketh, so is he. You have to renew your mind. You have to spend time renewing your mind so that when you begin to rest, those things come to the top. He whose mind has stayed in the Lord is kept in perfect peace. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be continually in my mouth. He will cause all things to work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are those that are called to his purpose. You begin to reflect upon the word of the Lord so that you can begin to declare, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Those are things that, just little tidbits that I have put on. I didn't read those. I didn't capture those. Those are things that I have put into my spirit over time. And you can do the same thing. And you can begin to declare the same things in your rest because without rest, you're going to be wore out all the time, exhausted all the time. And at a point of exhaustion, you do things that sometimes you ordinarily wouldn't do. I have found that the enemy would like to keep me in a place of turmoil. A place where that I'm continually bombarded by the iniquities of the world. Frustrated to a point and level that love will wax cold. Why is that? Because if you've not got the rest that you need, you're short with those that you love. You may not respond in the way that you should because you're tired, exhausted, frustrated. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man that brings wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger. Wow. 
and forsake wrath. We read in the book of Romans that says, The wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any way to do evil. Because evildoers will be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. And another place in Isaiah it says, Not only shall they inherit the earth, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. For this is the heritage of the saints of God. Amen? Let's go back to the book of John. I want you to see this. and I'm going to try to wrap this up quick. I'm nowhere near finished, but I want you to see this. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you in verse 16 of Romans 15, or excuse me, John 15. John chapter 15, verse 16. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. How many in this room know that they are called to the Lord? Every hand should go up that is a believer. Called appointed and anointed called appointed and anointed <laughs> you don't have to question it because you're here he loves you he, he is he, he, you are here you are called to be here amen i believe that god has called the both of you here to be a part of the fruit of the love of this church And the grace of Almighty God through Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 You know how I know that's true? It's because the scripture says, God is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness. Did you know that? I I read in the scriptures, it says, in the book of Thessalonians, it says it like this. Some say, where is the promise of the Father? Because since our fathers fell asleep, we've heard of his return, and he's not returned. And he says, God is not slack concerning this promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish in their sin, but that all may come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. He is long-suffering, giving us opportunity to declare his word and grace. Amen? That's how I know that you're called and appointed and anointed to be here. (laughs) Hallelujah. Go with me to the book of Galatians. I'm going to wrap this up. I like this because the fruit that is to remain in our lives is the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1 says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Hallelujah. God doesn't want us in bondage. Look at verse 12. I would they were even cut off which trouble you. Now how many know that there's going to be times in our life where that we face difficulties and troubles and obstacles in our life? I have found that the things that oftentimes come against me are what makes me stronger. When I think about who has been the most influential in strengthening my life. It's not been those that have patted me on the back and say, you're great, pastor. You're the most awesome pastor I've ever served under. But it's been those that have been a thorn in my side. Those that have brought things out in my flesh that I thought weren't there. Thank you for tuning in today to A New Life in Christ, a radio ministry of Agape Family Worship Center. We hope you've been blessed by this message and encouraged to pursue a deeper relationship in Christ. Please feel free to contact us or visit us at Agape Family Worship Center, 4111 Maple View Drive, Beaver Creek, Ohio, 45432. Sunday service, 11 a.m., Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Until next week, God bless you is our prayer.